Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, currency strategist with Daily FX. Today is Monday, August 29th, 2016. These are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America. And if you're looking for headlines out of Europe, you're going to be sorry. Well, markets are quiet there with UK on bank holiday. We'll look for a regular activity to resume midweek, but it should be a quiet week. I know there are NFPs on Friday. It is the week before U.S. Labor Day. It's the unofficial last week of summer, and so traders, for the most part, will be away from their desks to catch those last few rays. If it's you know, out east on the end of Long Island or in the Mediterranean Riviera, in any case, what you're looking at is, today at least, a situation where U.S. economic data could actually start to put the brakes on the continuation of this dollar move. And I say that because we have core PCE, the Fed's preferred gauge of inflation, due up at 8.30 Eastern, 12.30 GMT, something that will probably be due out by the time you get around to watching this video. But if that data is weaker than expected, that could indicate maybe inflation remains below the Fed's threshold. This lurch forward in market pricing for the Fed's rate hike this year after the Jackson Hole Economic Policy Symposium may be overdone, perhaps due to a few participants sitting around or low liquidity. And as such, markets could be set to reassess their view before Friday's NFP. You get a strong NFP on Friday, you could really get the market bulled up about a September hike. I still think we're in a bit of a deja vu from last year. Get good data into a September hold, a hawkish hold, paves the way for the December hike so they can almost... So that right now it's important we keep an eye on the calendar. With regards to what's going on in the dollar index itself, there was a big break higher in those interest rate expectations on Friday. About 44% chance of a Fed rate hike by December. On Thursday, it was up by 65% by market close on Friday. All this while, we didn't see the ECB's measures of market pricing for their rate cut move, 39% to 36% between Thursday and Friday. So the parity that was keeping Euro dollar in check all summer, where as the Fed got relatively less hawkish, the ECB got relatively more dovish. We've seen that somewhat break. You get a key reversal or outside engulfing bar on Friday in Euro dollar. Likewise, it's there in Aussie dollar and again in pound dollar. And you have a situation where the U.S. dollar index, at least on technical grounds, looks to be in much healthier condition than it was just a few days ago. And so all the bearish talk about price relative to moving averages, et cetera, et cetera, you can kind of throw this away when you get a key reversal like this. It's something that we look for to mark a turn in the market. You had one on June 24th was a big one. Now we're seeing one come into play here. We'll see if we find follow through to the top side. But in any case, Fed fund futures have made a big improvement forward. December 2016 is now being priced as the most likely period for the first Fed rate hike. Again, it wasn't really Janet Yellen that drove it there. After her speech, Euro dollar was more or less unchanged, right around 112.80. Uh, Fed funds futures contracts were still pricing in just around a 50% chance of a hike. It was during the day when other speakers came out and hammered home the point that they see, too, that data has been improving and that there is an increased chance that the rates move higher over the coming months. So where does this leave other pairs? Well, I have to consider right now, at least for euro dollar, if this is a euro or just a dollar thing, I think there may be some reason to believe that while this is driven by the dollar right now, the euro itself isn't doing that healthy. If you consider the fact that over the last month, the City Economic Surprise Index has retreated by about seven points or 25%, you look at five-year, five-year inflation forwards, the ECB's, or one of the ECB's preferred gauges of inflation as much as Mario Draghi has admitted in the past, that's fallen from about 1.34% to 1.30%. Energy prices remain weak. And in this absence of really any sort of bad news from Europe over the last month, things just haven't been going well. The recovery remains weak and fragile. And so along those lines, you had Benoit Core from the ECB come out at the Jackson Hole Economic Policy Symposium this weekend and say that it's very possible that if other policymakers in the decision realm, i.e. fiscal policymakers, politicians, don't do more to help the recovery, then the ECB will have to act again. And right now, with only a 36% chance of a cut priced into the market, there's plenty of room for the euro to weaken if market prices in new measures of easing. Concurrently, you look at the futures market positioning, only about 76,000 net short euro contracts on the books through the week of August 23rd, down by about 25% from a month earlier on July 29th. I think there's more room for euro dollar to decline to the downside. And you know, right now, when we put this in context of 
what's going on and the technicals. We may have made a very significant break on Friday. Back below this trend line from the highs we had in May and in June, false breakout perhaps. We never really got back above trend line from the December, March lows there. Euro dollar could very well be back due for a retest of 110 over the coming weeks. That's it for me today. I'll be back later on with another video. Of course, UK Bank holiday today, so quiet elsewhere. Keep an eye on the U.S. calendar this week as it does pick up. Core PCE today, 12.30 GMT. Beyond that, U.S. consumer confidence tomorrow, 80 p.m. on Wednesday. NFPs on Friday should be a good time to get some clarity on whether or not the Fed may actually hike in September. We can't totally dismiss it just yet. Talk to everyone soon. Good luck trading the rest of today.